group of people. Amen. I, I texted my wife and said, wow, this is what church is supposed to be like. Amen. Come on, right? Wow, it's awesome this morning. Let's appreciate Pastor Peter and Tricia. We have been friends for many years. He's right, man. My wife prayed me into the kingdom. Praise the Lord. I was a third generation alcoholic. I didn't just drink to drink. I got drunk every day. So my wife just prayed for me sincerely one day. And she said, I, and really it was uh, the Lord's mercy because she actually prayed and said, I don't know if I can stay another week with this guy. You better do something, Lord. And I was driving down the highway, and the Lord audibly spoke to me, and he got my attention. How many of y'all know, blessed are those who see and don't see and believe and how much more I had to hear to get born again, but I did. So uh, my life was radically changed in one moment. I had to, I had to become a, I actually had to, become how to think again and think differently my language changed my uh, identity everything that I was was gone just like that it was amazing it uh it wasn't uh, of course there's a process of I was uh, two days uh, two days later I was filled with the Holy Spirit bat- received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the closet I didn't know what was going on but I liked it <laughs> I had no idea there was no language for it. I was in a little town in Texas, and I didn't know who to hang with or anything. But So I just was hungry for the Lord, you know. And so something had dramatically changed in my life. And so I just, every morning I'd wake up early in the morning, go to my office, and I'd just welcome. So I wouldn't know how to do it. I just said, okay, uh, here I am, Lord. I don't understand all this, but uh, it feels really good. And I would literally lay down, and I'd say, and I'd go home, and Janet said, well, you look like you've been sleeping. I said, well, I'm not really sleeping, but I'm not really awake, but I like it. <laughs> so I learned right at the beginning how to stay intoxicated for Jesus. Amen? Amen. So it's great to be here, Palm Sunday. This is What an exciting thing, that uh, the way the Lord designs things. I had no really idea and didn't even realize it until yesterday that this is Palm Sunday, and I get the joy of being here at this fellowship and the, the significance of it. It was just uh, recently, right before Rosh Hashanah, I had a powerful encounter with the Lord. And in this encounter, I was driving over to Walmart. My wife had sent, said, I need this, and it was late at night, and, or about 9 o'clock, raining real hard. And so I said, I'll go. And I, there's a Walmart right by our house, not too far. But I decided to go to another one. I don't know why I did. But as I'm driving over there, a double rainbow literally shows up. And it's like I went right through the gate of that rainbow. And it was amazing because the Lord told me at that moment, and this was probably two weeks before Rosh Hashanah, he said, it's important to revisit covenant. It's important to revisit covenant. And so uh, immediately I, I knew when the Lord spoke to me that it was the importance of just going right into covenant and st- studying covenant. So uh, two weeks on Rosh Hashanah, the Sunday I was in a cowboy church up in Fort Davis, uh, Texas. It was up in the back of the Big, Big Bend National Park. Beautiful area, real high mountain area. And on Saturday night, I did a Saturday night service for them. And I left the service and went through the little town. It's a little town. And there was no lights on in the town. I'm thinking, man, this is the darkest town I've ever been in. Where's the street lights? They can't even pay for the electric around here. And so I get out of my expedition. And when I did, the spence of the stars was literally breathtaking. And it was amazing to me. I just looked up and immediately I was so aware of the creativity and the power of the Lord in a fresh way. I called my wife and I said, I don't really understand what's going on right now. But, oh my goodness, babe. And she said, I can feel it too. So we're in, we're 400 miles apart. Texas is a big state. And we're both being just a fresh encounter. Now, the I went to the church the next morning and did the service. And the Lord said, stay for Rosh Hashanah here, and I usually go home, and so I, I said, well, I'm going to stay here, and immediately the pastor, who's a friend of mine, 
there are ranchers there. They have a, like 100,000 acres. It's huge ranch. It's not a little ranch. And he said, well, you want to call a special meeting tonight then at the church? I said, no. I just feel like I'm just supposed to stay here and meet with the Lord. He said, well, at least come out to the house and we'll have a prayer time. I said, okay. So I went out to their house and just met with their family and a few friends. And the uh, travailing of intercession came upon me. I'm usually very quiet in the area, of, uh, unless I'm by myself. I'm very vocal with the Lord in prayer, as I'm very vocal anyway, but I'm the same way in prayer. But as all of a sudden the, the anointing came on me, I began to weep intently before the Lord. As I wept before the Lord, I heard my, I began to pray, Lord, where's your power? We need to see greater release of your power, O oh Lord. I began to weep intently. I said, I know that you're not lacking in power and the awesomeness of who you are. So it must be something with us. Do whatever you need to do. Whatever you need to do to create a trustful heart that you can release that realm of power. So uh, I, for the next few minutes, I just began to weep before the Lord. And it, and I was very uh, vulnerable, even in front of these people, because I was just being real honest before the Lord. So that night, I usually uh, meet with the Lord early morning, around 3 a.m. And so as uh, so I'm getting ready for, to meet with the Lord at Rosh Hashanah, at three, two, between 2 and 6 in the morning, all of a sudden the Lord told me, he said, I'm going to meet with you at 4 a.m. And I was on a, I, I live in expectation because I stay fresh in the spirit. If you stay fresh in the spirit, you live in fresh expectation. See, the enemy wants to rob you of your spiritual expectation. But the Lord, when we stir up the gift like we were doing during worship, Pastor Peter was talking about stirring up the gift. How many know one of the things that begins to be released in a greater way is your expectation? Yeah. Come on. How many want the Lord to turn up your expectation? Come on. And so... and. I, I just felt this, this delight and anxiousness deep within me, and I couldn't wait. So I, I should have went back to sleep, but I couldn't go to sleep. So I, I, I had a real nice place they rented for me, and uh, it, was, it was own little apartment-like thing. And you walk out, and there's a deck. And so I walk out on the deck with anticipation. I'm about to meet with the Lord, and and nothing. And then... So I went like that for till for about two hours. And at 4 a.m., I stepped out on that deck, and all of a sudden, boom. and I figured, found out why all the lights were off in the city because they have a, a huge, huge uh, power scope where people come from all over to see the spans, and so they shut off all the lights because of how beautiful the firmament is. And the moment I stepped out there, immediately this. This revelation of the vastness of God began to just hit me with waves after waves after waves of a new depth of, of the revelation of a mightiness and the power and the might of God. And so uh, the Lord gave me a couple passages, and I want to kind of share out of those passages before I go into the message. But if you would, turn in your Bible to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 26 and it says this lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things who brings out their host by number he calls them all by name by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power not one is missing let's read this again lift up your eyes and on high and see who has created these things who brings out their host by number he calls them all by name and by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power not one is missing wow so basically it's just telling us that the lord created the firmament the billions of stars and he set them in and he has named every one of them by, and it literally tells us how he did that. He said, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. That's amazing because we have access to the greatness of that might and the strength of his power. 
And he wants us to understand and begin to function out of a greater realm of that degree of his power. Listen, and if you would go to Proverbs, I'm going to show you just a couple passages. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. And it says in verse 19, The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. So wisdom worked with the power and the might of the Lord in creativity. Now, it's amazing because when I begin to pray about, Lord, the church needs to move in another degree, another level of power. The world needs to see audibly and visibly the evidence of a mighty God. Amen? Amen? And with that, he says, I created the heavens and the earth with my might and power. And the Lord began to tell me that he's, he wants to create in us a wisdom to be able to function with the power he wants to release. How many are glad that the church is about to come into another depth of wisdom? Come on. We need to move in wisdom of the Lord. Now, we see that by power and strength, the firmament was created, which the, we have scientists and people coming from all over to study the stars. And they, they keep saying it keeps going and going and going and going, and they, they still can't study it. But our God created them in one moment and named every one of them, and he's made available the same power, the same strength by his wisdom today for you and I. Now watch this, because... I want to show you, go to uh, Psalms 104, verse 30. Psalms 104, verse 30. It says, you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renewed the face of the earth. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And he's talking about creation and how when the earth was without form and void, that the Holy Spirit moved and repaired, renewed the earth. But in the same passage, he also talks about how the movement of the Holy Spirit created us. And so part of what the Lord wants us to come into understanding that a lot of times when we talk about wisdom, we talk about creativity. It's more in the arts. So, and those things are true. Those things are true in worship and creativity of arts and abilities and so forth. But the Lord wants to give the church an ability of the wisdom to move in the creative miracle power of the Lord. And the Lord showed me what was coming was that no one person can handle what he wants to release because there's an anointing in the cluster. And he's going to raise up a company of believers, a company moving in one heart, one accord, that he can release a greater capacity of the miracle working power of the Lord and will have wisdom. So this morning, how many need a miracle? Because there's a miracle waiting on you this morning. It isn't by accident you're here. The Lord knows you're here, and there's a miracle waiting on you. And tell your neighbor he's more than well, than, he's more than able to do it. Amen? Now, I want to show you one other passage before I go into something else. But if you would, you know, go to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. I love the testimony that Pastor Peter was sharing about the man who was wonderfully saved. And many of the things that we sung this morning. We, know, we need to know who we are. And then as a result, and not who we used to be, but who we are. And the more we know him, the more we know who we are. The less we know about the knowledge of God, not in information but out of revelation, it keeps the hiddenness of who we are in our own lives. We sung about the well within us. See, the enemy wants you to not come into full revelation of the joy of the fountain of the living water he's placed within you. But there's a thirsty, dying world that needs those rivers to flow. And the Lord's about to lift the lid off those rivers. He wants those rivers to flow. So how many this morning would be willing for the Lord to take off every limitation off that well? Because the well's going to spring up. Tell your neighbor it's going to spring up. Come on. And wherever you go, the rivers are going to flow. Tell your neighbor wherever you go, the rivers are going to flow. Come on. And wells of salvation will spring up. 
We've sung about that we have power in the working of miracles. The Lord wants us to come into understanding it's not by your ability, but by who he is already in you. And he wants to spring up through you and that ability, but in wisdom. How many want wisdom and the ability to pray and creativity with the confidence that when you pray for that liver, you know he created that liver. That when you pray for that lung, you know he created that lung. When you pray for that pancreas, you know he created that pancreas. That you know he created every fiber of that being. And the moment you pray, the power of the Holy Spirit is about to glorify Jesus. That he's the same today as what he was yesterday. And he'll be the same tomorrow. That he created you and he can heal you. How fast? Just like that. Tell your neighbor, miracles are waiting. Tell your other neighbor, step into your miracle. Come on, amen. And then how many want today a greater understanding through revelation and by the awakening of the Holy Spirit, understanding that you are gifted with the gift and you can see the working of miracles in your life and you can function out of the power of the Holy Spirit. How powerful is that power? He set in the firmament. He named every star. He created it by how? His might and his power. And dunamis power is living inside of you. Come on. Tell your neighbor, take the lids off. Come on. I'm here to, I'm here to, have, here to have a radical morning with the Lord. Come on. Ha, ha, ha. Woo. I am very excited about Jesus. Amen. Now, you prayed it. I, I heard Pastor Peter get you guys to pray. Surprise me. How many want to get a Holy Ghost surprise? Amen. Amen. So look at here in Mark chapter 6, verse 2. I love this story. It says, when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, that's what happens with me. And I know it does with my friend, that he sees some of his old buddies. And he don't talk the same. He don't sound the same. He don't act the same because he isn't the same. And they are astonished. <laughs> isn't that that guy that we get in jail before 19? I, I meet people in Amarillo, and they go, uh, what do you do now, man? I'm a preacher. <laughs> what? Come on. But it doesn't just start at salvation. The Bible says in Psalms 90, Lord, let your glory be upon me that even my children are surprised and see the glory of the Lord. How many want to be transformed that people you've even known for years are astonished because of the work of the Lord in your life, dear friend? Come on, tell your neighbors glory to glory. And when you get this well flowing, it changes your, literally, the power of your decree, your voice. Uh, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. He says, let my very speech be anointed with power and movement of the Holy Spirit. That my hearers are stirred in their most holy emotions. I want my voice to carry in an anointing that when I talk, people go, Phew, something's going on in me. I pray when I preach that you're sitting there and you go, what's this bubbling up? Because it says in Romans 15, 13, by the power of the Holy Spirit, hope will bubble up in your being. Tell your neighbor, get ready for bubbling up. Amen. But it goes on to say, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? Tell your neighbor, you're astonishing. <laughs> Come on. You got to grab hold and pull down that old nature. It's not you no more. You're a brand new creation. <laughs> Woohoo! Amen. You shouldn't even think the same no more. Take those things captive. Anyway, it says, Look at this. Where did this man get these things? What wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? What was given to him? Wisdom. 
And if you look at this in the Greek, it literally means this. The wisdom, this word wisdom in the Greek means every area of life, supernaturally, spiritually, and naturally. And literally, he was able with the wisdom to move in the dunamis given that caused others to marvel because of the exploits that were done through his life. The Lord wants to take your life in the same way. He wants to give you and operate out of the spirit of wisdom and the capability to begin to function of not what's coming, but what he's already give you at the victory of the cross. And he wants you to live out of that realm of supernatural realm of the majestic glory of God that wherever you go, you create an atmosphere of supernatural expectation. And that the world's no longer looking out there for the supernatural. They know where the supernatural realm of God is. Tell your neighbor, you're an ambassador for, the, for Christ, the anointed one in his anointing. See, one of the things about wisdom in a nutshell is wisdom is, is knowing God and God's way of doing things. Now look at here, verse 3. It says, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Jose, Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. Come on. I, I want to offend some people. Like, where did he get this stuff? Come on. The Bible says provoke one another to love. Right? Come on. I, I've been now uh, traveling for 20-something years. But I'm as hungry as the day I there. I, I, I'm more hungrier now to see because of the need. Because the more you grow in the Lord, the more you grow in the love of the Lord. And the more you grow in the love of the Lord, the more you see things differently. And you begin to, it's more than just wanting to see a sign and a wonder. It's a burden. It's a joy. It's an excitement that's built up by the Holy Spirit. Wanting people to see them get set free. To see them come into the fullness. That cancer would be eradicated out of their life. That disease would be broken. That the resistance of Satan and his disease and sickness would be rebuked. And Jesus would come afresh and bring wholeness and healing. And we've been given the privilege wherever we go to move in the supernatural glory of God. He says, welcome to his majestic glory come on the day you got saved you went through the door called Jesus and it was to enter the kingdom or the realm of his glory and the realm of his glory in the realm of his glory is grace and power unlimited and is is in the realm of the glory the words difficult the words difficult don't exist in the glory the words impossibilities do not exist in the glory. Those things do not exist. And you have now been given interest by the blood of Jesus to the glory realm of God that you can make evident not in word only, but demonstration of the visible and the audibility of the glory of God and see people's lives changed around you. And even here this morning, God's going to break out in some miracles. Amen? Give your neighbor a hot fire five. Say fire. Amen. So in this season, it, my hope, the Lord's uh, for a couple of years had me ministering quite a bit on the remnant. But this year, the Lord said, it's time for the company of believers to arise. In Acts chapter 4, it's amazing because they all got back together. They went through some persecution. Now, there's nobody in this room that hasn't gone through some things. And it's, it's, the, it's the tactic of the unseen realm to cause you to lose your spiritual momentum. And when you lose your spiritual momentum, you also lose that spiritual expectation. And when you have no expectation, there's no anticipation with confidence that you're going to obtain these biblical promises or the prophetic words in your own life. And what the Lord begins to do is bring refreshing and renewing to stir you up again within you to believe that every biblical promise has been sealed by the blood and made available to you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
and also for the prophetic promises in your life. It begins to create a fresh new anticipation that this is a year of fulfillment. Uh, listen, I love prophetic, but how many love fulfillment better? Come on, tell three people I like fulfillment better. Come on. Come on. We, we live by faith, not by sight. So we believe the title deed of this. But there's, there's a point it manifests. There's a point of manifestation. There's a point of manifestation. There's a point of manifestation. And when, the more that we're awakened to the reality of the glory, the more that we're awakened to the manifestation of the glory, it isn't just a cloud or a feeling, but it's a manifestation of the might and the power and the strength of who God is or as he is, we begin to see great things begin to take place because it's not by might, it's not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Now I have uh, just a few things. I know it's Palm Sunday. The triumphant, uh, I have a little bit of a slide I put together this morning. The triumphant walk of Jesus on Palm Sunday. How many glad that he walked a triumphant walk for you? Amen. Just take a few minutes just to get to where I'm going. If you would, for the next slide, please. It said, and this is one of my favorite passages. If you have your Bible, iPhone, iPad, please look in Psalms 85. Psalms 85. In verse 10, I just have verse 13 lifted there. But if you would, I'm going to read beginning in verse 10. It says, mercy and truth have met together. Righteous and peace have kissed Truth shall spring up out of the earth. How many glad that Jesus was resurrected? Come on. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. He's seated on the right-hand side of your father. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land shall yield its increase. Verse 13. Righteousness shall go before him and shall make his footsteps our pathway. Wow. So literally his footsteps on that day that we're celebrating is that his triumphant, as he's walking into Jerusalem, how many are glad that your, his footsteps are your pathway? Because he know he went right to the cross, and from the cross he went down and sat, did the greatest breaker breakthrough we've ever known, and the mankind will ever enjoy as he went down and plucked out sin and death from the hands of the devil and broke the barrier of the bondage of sin that has kept us from knowing our Heavenly Father and rent the veil that we have unlimited access to the holy place of the Lord. How many are glad for that pathway? Tell your neighbor, I'm on the right pathway. Come on, tell three people, I'm on the right pathway. Come on. Tell somebody, I'm on the path of life. Amen. So we know that Jesus, the breaker, broke the barrier between God and man when he died on the cross and took his blood into the most holy place. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered into the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 12. Therefore, brethren, have boldness. Tell your neighbor, have boldness. To enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 21. Next slide, please. We must learn to walk in the glory of the power of the blood. There's a glory. It's the glory of God. The access to the Lord is living in perpetual place of the glory of God. The glory of God is the majestic realm of glory. It's the realm of the supernatural presence of the Lord and filled with his grace and his power and we have been invited it isn't just in our sins have been washed away praise the lord it isn't that we're just a brand new creation praise the lord it isn't that we just we don't just have our name in a church role but we have our name in heaven's role called the lamb's book of life how many are glad for your name in the lamb's book of life but also we have where we can abide in the glory and one of the things that the enemy wants to do is keep the church asleep and not be awakened to the majestic realm of the glory. 
And the more that we understand and begin to be awakened to the majestic realm of God's glory, we'll live in supernatural expectation. And wherever we go, that supernatural expectation will be contagious to the lost around us. It will cause them to take notice that there's something different about us. And that wherever we go, whatever need, according to Isaiah 61, just like Jesus in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, he was the master of the breakthrough, and he brought liberty to every person he met. How many want to move in that kind of glory and power of the Lord? Come on. To walk out or live in the fullness of the victory that the Lord brought by the shedding of his blood on the cross. The power of the cross to us who are saved. That's what Paul said is important that we preach. Which is 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. I love that power of the preaching of the cross. How many of you remember reading the, on the road of Emmaus where Jesus steps in the middle of the conversation of two people. And they were talking about Jesus. And so Jesus says, what are you talking about? He said, well, we're talking about, haven't you heard about the prophet, Jesus from Nazareth, who was mighty in deed and word before God and man? And so then Jesus turns around and preached Jesus to them. I'm pretty sure if Jesus preached Jesus, we should probably preach Jesus too. Amen? We're redeemed by the blood, but there is a fuller knowledge of the power of the blood. Starting this weekend into resurrection weekend next week. How many want the Holy Spirit to come fresh for you in the spirit of wisdom and revelation of what the power of the blood of Jesus has done for you? To come into a greater understanding of the victory of the cross, of the depth of the covenant, and the understanding that he has made an oath with you. And see, a promise isn't, as good as, isn't just as good as with a character of a person or the ability to back up that. And we know that God's character is that we can have faith to know that he loves you and what he tells you is true. So you can trust the character of God that every biblical promise that you find in this Bible, he is well able with his wisdom, his authority, and his power, and his might to fulfill in your life. Give the Lord a shout. Come on. So I just would like for you to lift your hands up and just ask the Holy Spirit that oh, this time that you awaken to a deeper revelation of the knowledge of Jesus, of New Testament covenant, the joy of it all, the beauty realm of God's glory and holiness that now we have access and literally been robed with the robe of righteousness because of the garment of salvation. Oh, my goodness, the best days are before us. Because the wind of the Spirit is blowing afresh, waking up the hearts like a plane of, a string, of an instrument. The reed has now been wet, and there's about to come a beautiful sound as the army of the Lord arises into the fullness of the revelation of divine covenant. How many want the Holy Spirit's wind to blow afresh for you? to bring a fresh awakening in your life. Come on, ask the Lord right now. Come, Holy Spirit, in a fresh way. Open my eyes of my heart. Illuminate me with understanding that will revolutionize my life. Because covenant, when you get understanding of covenant, it will revolutionize your life in every area of your life. Family, personally, relational, provision, health, every area of your life will be radically revolutionized. How many want the Holy Spirit? He's the only, only God can reveal God things. And you have the author living in you. And he wants to awaken your heart to greater faith, which releases an expectation that he's provided for you all that you need. That there's a miracle. If you need a miracle in your body, that he's the one who created you. And the Holy Spirit is here to glorify Jesus today that he's the same yesterday. He'll be the same today and he'll be the same tomorrow. And he went about healing all because he moved with dunamis power by the wisdom of God that when the heaven and the earth were created, when you were created from the dust of the ground, Holy Spirit was there and he moved with wisdom 
being, creating every fiber of your being, that doctors are still trying to figure out some of the things that have taken place. And in one moment, he created you. And how many of y'all know he can repair you just like that? Come on, tell somebody, get ready for your miracle. Amen. Come on. Divine recovery. Tell your neighbor, divine recovery. Our ministry went into this year, and the Lord said to name this year into 2020 that this is a time of recovery and discovery. It's a year. How many want this to be a time of recovery of things lost? Come on. And some of the things that were lost, what the enemy did is from 500 years of dark age, he hid what the victory of the cross that the New Testament church was already operated in. But guess what? It's a time of discovery. Tell your neighbor, I'm, I'm going after the treasure. Tell your neighbor, he, those who fear him, he shows them the secret of his covenant. But guess what I found out about the Lord? You ever had somebody tell you, hey, I'm going to tell you a secret, but don't tell nobody. You ever had somebody do that? Or call you on the phone, hey, I'm going to tell you. I tell them, well, don't tell me because I tell everybody everything. <laughs> That's why I stay away from gossip. and <laughs> I don't want that stuff messing with me. I don't want to hear all that stuff. So I tell them, oh, if you tell me a secret, I'm going to tell everybody. Because that's what Jesus said to do. He said, what I show you in secret, stand up on the rooftop and tell everybody. So every time that the Lord brings an awakening to the revelation of that which has already been facilitated, lavishly poured out for you at the victory of the cross, he don't want you to hold it in. He wants you to tell everybody. How many are going to tell some people this year? It's a year of discovery. Come on, tell your neighbor it's a year of discovery. Tell your neighbor there's gold waiting in there for you. Life is waiting for the way he intends for you. Right here. Woohoo. <laughs> it's called abundant living. Overflowing. That the ordinary isn't the living that you and I live, but it's extraordinary is the ordinary. But we make the extraordinary, but Jesus said he wants you to live in the extraordinary. That becomes the ordinary. Otherwise, living in a higher level of expectation. See? And the more you understand covenant, the more that it creates an expectation. Because you understand the one who made a covenant with you, which is an oath. An oath is different than a promise because a promise has potential on both sides. But an oath is it's by his faithfulness, by not by anything of your works. He made an oath with you. And you can have faith that God loves you and he tells you the truth. And there's hidden secrets of promises that he wants you to tap into, not just information, but manifestation. Tell your neighbor, this is a year of manifestation. Come on. See, here's the thing, and uh, we get around people every day, and we can tell them about the Lord, but they need to audibly and visibly encounter the supernatural glory of God. They need to encounter Him. That's why He has given, made you an ambassador, a carrier of the glory. And remember, in the glory, the words limited, Difficult impossibilities don't exist. And you're a character carrier for the king of glory to come into any situation. And in the realm of the glory is supernatural turnaround, supernatural breakthrough, supernatural healing, supernatural provision, supernatural ability from God's grace and power. And he, to, he wants us to not every once in a while ascend to the glory, but learn how to live out of the glory. How many want to live out of the glory? Come on, how many want to live out of that resurrection glory? 
resurrection glory. And the world is about to encounter a company of believers. Not one or two, but a company of people. Let the wind blow on this place, Lord. Let your wind blow upon every believer's heart to awaken us. Awaken us, Holy Spirit. See, he wants us to fully awaken to covenant blessings. Tell your neighbor, covenant blessing. Look at the power of the blood. You're redeemed by the blood, reconciled through the blood, cleansed through the blood. How many are glad you're cleansed through the blood? I'm glad I'm cleansed through the blood. How many stay clean because of the blood? Sanctified through the blood, union with God through the blood. Otherwise, you were separated from God. And now you're in union with God because of the blood. Are you enjoying that union? John 15, 5 said that you can literally be in union with him. It literally means where the scripture, I can do all things through Christ who lives through me. It's no longer I who live, but he who lives through me. It's two becoming one, working together in co-fellowship. The word there, fellowship, looks like a heavenly dance. How many are glad that the Holy Spirit is your dance leader? Come on. And he's taking you on a wonderful dance. Come on, tell your neighbor, great things are ahead for you. Let me kind of hurry. Victory over Satan. Tell your neighbor, the enemy's been defeated. Access to our Father by the blood, promise of God to us through the blood. Next one, please. I'm going to kind of hurry. We have, we, 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 when we have limited understanding of the power of the blood, it prevents a deeper and more perfect manifestation of its effects in our life. That's why we need to study and understand covenant, dear friends. As we discover what Scripture teaches about the blood, we will have greater understanding with faith in the victory of Jesus and his promise to us, and we will see greater results. The power of the blood of Christ is nothing less than the eternal power of God himself. Go to the next one for time's sake. A limited knowledge of the blood keeps us from greater aspects of faith in the power of the blood. Little knowledge, little faith, little faith, little expectation. See, this place, you could feel it when I walked in here this morning. See, anybody that wasn't used to this environment, the moment they would sense something of an expectation, see. And, it, and the water rose as the service went on. And the atmosphere began to change as the glory of God came and rested upon the praises of his people. And as the glory of God came and rested on the praises of his people, people had never been in this environment. All of a sudden, they don't understand it. We were just in the service this weekend, and two people had never been touched by the presence of God said, I, I've never felt like this before. I, I feel funny. They finally feel alive. And the more we understand the well that's within us, the more we live out of a higher level of expectation. And then when the cluster gets together in the community of believers, there is a higher level of expectation that breaks through the cement fog of the enemy in the region and begins to awaken to people that don't even know or want to know anything about God. And all of a sudden, they begin to hit the rays of glory. The light begins to break through the darkness of the smoke of the deception of the evil one. And all of a sudden, they become realized there is a living God. I need to know God. And revival begins to break out in the land. How many are glad for the covenant of Jesus? Come on, give the Lord a shout. Thank you for your covenant, Lord. Come on. Come on. Ask the Lord to break through. Break through. Break through. Break through. Come on. For your homes, for your community, for your city, for your region. Come on. Just like he did for you. Just like he did for Peter. Break through. Tear down the barrier. Tear down the barrier. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Tell three people this is a new time, new season for you. Come on. Tell somebody the breath of God is blowing. We sung it. He's causing the dead, dry bones to come together. What do you see? What do you see? I see a mighty army standing up. It's the army of the Lord. What do you see? 
prophesy to the four winds. Prophesy to the four winds. Holy Spirit, come to the north, the south, the east, and the west. Put us together in one heart, one accord, that Jesus, the signal of Jesus, will be high and lifted up. That the signal of Jesus in the unseen realm, because more is done in the unseen realm than you know. And because of covenant, we have authority in the unseen realm. Because the unseen realm has them bound. Powers for the natural, authorities for the unseen realm. How many want to be awakened to the authority? Come on. Come on. Give the Lord one great shout before you sit down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Shout out. Victory! 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 Come on. We understand in faith this creates supernatural expectation that will fill us with anticipation and confidence in attaining what is hoped for and expected. I, I believe that the church is about to hit another level of expectation. How many want to be on the edge of your seat because you, you just don't know what God's going to do? Guess what? Get ready for some surprises. Tell your neighbor it's not church as usual. Come on. Tell your neighbor it's a new day. This supernatural expectation, the Lord is able to do everything he promised. See, here's the thing. It says in Romans 15, 13 that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you live in fresh hope every day. If you live by the key. And the key is Ephesians 5, 18, to be filled afresh every day. We drank, and I remember my drinking days. And so I remember when I got saved, there was just a couple of scriptures I immediately liked. And they wanted me to read John. It says it's the love chapter, the love book. But I liked Ephesians 6 because you got a sword and a shield. I thought, that's pretty cool. I like that. And in Zechariah, you got a horse, and I rode horses, so I thought that was pretty cool. And so I'm reading the Bible one day, and I saw, don't be drunk with wine that causes wild living, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. I went, uh-oh, this guy has my number. I said, so I understood what he was talking about. Because if you got drunk the day before, you had to hang over the next day. And the only way you got drunk again is you did what you did the day before. You drink and you drink and you drink. And so he's saying, don't live in yesterday's river. Jump in in a fresh way. Draw deep from the well of salvation in you. When we ask for the Lord for the well to spring up, he's ask, you're asking for the well of the fountain of well that's bottomless, endless, that is ever enlarging as you have revelation knowledge that you can function out of that well to submerge you, fill you, to touch your soul and touch your body, to renew you every day. Tell your neighbor, spring up a well. Come on, tell three people. If tell, I'm not calling you old. I'm just talking to that well in you. <laughs> Amen. Okay, I'm going to begin to close right here. Please grab the next part, please. The cross is the heart of the gospel, the center of gravity in the New Testament faith, first and foremost, in the atonement and the forgiveness of sins. How many agree with that? How many glad your sins are forgiven? Come on. Cleansed by the blood. The cross is the basis for all God's work in our life, to forgive us, restore us, heal our brokenness, to touch our physical needs, and signs and wonders reveal the nature of God. What's the nature of God? Love. What is the nature of God? Love. Next one, please. The potential for release in the supernatural is and in through the cross. The cross is the fountainhead from which all blessings flow, including miracles, healings, and the power of the kingdom. In this message, we are pushing on the door that opens. All God's resources and power, all that which is supernatural is available to us. How many believe that God already made those things available to you and that at the cross, we've, we've all celebrated the victory of the cross, but the very gospel, the core of the gospel is the forgiveness of sin, of being a brand new creation, to have our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you're here today. It doesn't matter. Just like what Paul uh, 
Pastor Peter prophesied that it doesn't matter if you're part of a church that sees miracles. It doesn't matter if you're part and hang out with people that see miracles. There will be a day that you stand before the Lord God Almighty and the only thing he's going to look at, your good deeds are great. Honorable to go to church. Honorable to be a good person. Honorable to try to live the Ten Commandments. Those things are awesome. Those things are honorable. But there's only one way you get to the gate and it's because your name is written in the last book of life because you have believed in the covenant of the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you agree with that, give the Lord a shout. It is the core of the gospel. It is the preaching of the gospel. It's the preaching of the gospel. But everywhere that Jesus went, not only did he bring the revelation of the true nature of God, because he was a visible evidence of the glory of our Father. And everywhere he went in Acts 10, 38, everywhere he went, he healed all who were sick and oppressed by the devil. So we know that not the core message of the cross is atonement, but it's also that we can believe in visible evidence called healings, miracles, and the gifts of the Spirit. And Peter himself today asked that the gift, the gift, and we come short in no gift because as a believer, you have received the gift. And he wants to operate with his gifts through your life. There are people waiting out there that need you to operate out of your gift of healing and the working of your miracle. You don't know how God's going to use you. You may be used in a mighty way for the uncurable to be cured because Jesus is the same today as what he was yesterday. And you've been gifted with the greatest gift of God is within you. You have the glory of God in you. It's not a cloud. It's not movement. Those are the activity of his glory. Glory. The glory is Christ in you is the hope of glory. And today the Lord wants to breathe afresh that I'm here. And what a joy to be at this place with, these wonderful, with such a great group of people and my friends. And I pray that the Holy Spirit comes like a fresh wind on this place in a new way. Because I know there's prophetic promises that you've been standing on, decreeing. I know these guys. I've been in these meetings when they begin to prophesy. And it cuts through so much. But we're ready to see some manifestation. And every one of those, listen, every prophetic word, every biblical promise can be fulfilled with, by the, what he is able to do. I live in that kind of expectation. Come on. I live in that kind of expectation. Me and my household shall serve the Lord. Me and my household shall serve the Lord. Me and my household shall serve the Lord. Come on. And it doesn't matter what crisis, what circumstances, what tribulation, what trial the enemy tries to bring you through. You're not ministering and living life out of determination, but out of supernatural expectation. And because you're living out of supernatural expectation, the same strength that he created, the feminine of the sky is operating in you. And just like Pastor Peter said, you grow stronger and stronger and stronger. And what used to be a Goliath, <laughs> he comes down. Why? Because he gets smaller? No, you you get bigger. Come on. You get bigger. Tell your neighbor, you're getting bigger. Come on, tell three people, you're getting bigger today. Come on. Come on. Ha, ha, ha. Woo. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're getting bigger today. Woo. You're getting bigger today. Come on. Whew. Every Sunday morning you come to this church, there's a table set for you. Come and feast at his table. Come and feast on the word, the meat of the word. Break bread with the Holy Spirit. Have a little New Testament wine. And when you leave this place, your natural mind may not, but inside here you're just going a little bit bigger. Come on. Come on. It grows a little bit bigger today. Oh, listen, it's amazing to me. We say, oh, I'm not going to eat for three weeks before Thanksgiving. Because I'm going to have me some pie and some pie and some pie and some pie and some pie. And what happens when you eat? Good. You grow. <laughs> you what? You grow. You let loose the button.
You call, it says you, you grow a little bit. So every time you come to church, how many want to grow today? Not outwardly, but inwardly. <laughs> and the things that used to hold you will hold you no more. They will what? They will hold you no more. Come on. Tell your neighbor from this time on. Come on. Tell three people from this time on. That's what he says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, you are made strong out of the power of the might of his kingdom. Kratos' dominion is operating in you. You'll never live like you used to live. The things that used to hold you will not hold you. From this point on, tell your neighbor, from this point on. Come on. Come on, shake it off, man. It's just like, oh, yeah. I ain't got no chains on these legs, man. I'm going to dance. I'm going to shout. Come on. I'm going to run. It's a time to accelerate. Whoa, come on. You're on the trampoline. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're on the trampoline of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on. See, the weight's coming off. You're a little lighter, but you're stronger. Because you're not going to carry the same baggage. You're not going to carry the same old stuff. Why? Because who the Son sets free. He's what? Yeah, we're celebrating the triumphant journey, the walk of Jesus into Jerusalem. And the way you bring him celebration, it's great. We shout, yell, but it's living your life out of the realm of his glory in covenant as mighty ones in the earth. That you're well able in the sufficiency of his sufficiency to fulfill everything he's written for your life that you can obtain with confidence every biblical promise from the Lord to you he is your healer he is your miracle he is your provision he is your supply he is life more abundantly he is life overflowing. See, he doesn't never intend us just to make it through life. He wants you to flow with life. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to flow with life. Come on. Tell three people, wherever I go, the water's going to splash all around other people. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> Come on. Tell three people, get ready. Come on. Tell them, get ready. Get ready for supernatural miracles, healing, and the operations of gifts. Come on, tell them, you live in the majestic glory. You should expect supernatural miracles, supernatural heals, supernatural operation of the gifts. Tell your neighbor, get ready for supernatural breakthrough because of the glory of God. Come on. Come on, supernatural turnaround. Tell your neighbor, everything's going to turn around. Come on. Come on. This time tomorrow. Come on. Come on. Supernatural. What's, what's the supernatural? It's the glory realm. It's the glory realm. You have access to the glory. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, get ready for supernatural acceleration. Remember, Elijah, come off the mountain and he outrun the chariot. I'm going to outrun some chariots, man. Tell your neighbor, get ready for acceleration of divine design for your life. 
Come on. Come on. Tell your neighbor, get ready for supernatural provision. He will provide everything you need physically, emotionally, financially, relationally, and spiritually. He will supply for your provision. Come on. Tell your neighbor, I'm living in a new higher height of supernatural expectation. Come on. Come on, Pastor Peter prophesied that. Higher heights. Higher heights. Come on, tell your neighbor, get ready for another dimension of the glory. Come on. When Jesus hung on that cross, went to the grave, went to the very pits of hell, rose again, sat right on the right side of the Father, and he looked at you, he looked at me, and he says, welcome to the glory. How many are glad for the majestic glory of God? Come on. Come on. See, it says, listen to this in Psalms 145. Don't sit down. I'm done. But I just want to just release this for you. 145 says this. Listen to this. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty. I will set my mind on your glory. Of your splendor, of your majesty. And it goes on to say, and on your wondrous works. See, see, we as a church, there's something fresh taking place in this season. And where's it gonna happen at? The church. The ones who have allowed him to posture you, position you for a greater power, dunamis, see dunamis always brings favor and favor brings influence and when you live out of the realm of his majestic glory because you've studied his glory, it becomes every fiber of your essence of your being you live in a supernatural expectation and Isaiah 61 becomes something that's a reality that you're called to be just like Jesus rebuild the ruined city and see the restoration of the desolation of generations. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, change lives. Come on. How? Change lives. Come on. There was a well in you, and Jesus said in John 7, 37, 38, out of that well, because of John 4, 14, out of that well shall flow streams of living water. And it says in Isaiah 41, wherever these rivers flow in the desolate heights because there are needy, thirsty people, these rivers begin to flow and harvest begins to take place. And what the enemy meant for ashes, you begin to see trees of righteousness well planted of the Lord. The cities are rebuilt. Lives are restored. The desolation of a thousand years of heritage is poured back on their life that sets the foundation for their children's children's children. The Lord wants to do something more than just, and we love revelation, but how many are ready for activation of manifestation? Come on. We create, we create as a, you can feel it in this place, in a heart of one accord. In unity of the believers, a supernatural expectation of the glory of God that there's nothing impossible for him. If you believe that today, give the Lord a great shout. Come on. Can we do something together? Okay. All right, so there's one thing I'd like to do. Come on back up. Because we both have been delivered from addictions. So there's power. One puts 1,000 to flight, two put 10,000 to flight, right? So here's another picture the Lord showed me about that trampoline deal. So here, the hard thing about letting go of an addiction is the known devil, is you think, is better than the unknown devil. You know, the thing that you're relying on that's a counterfeit, at least you know it. But if you let go of it, then you think you're going to be worse off. Here's the things I was hearing. Ambient. Some people think you have to have Ambien in order to sleep. It's a brutally bad drug, 
okay? You, you think, well, at least I'm sleeping with it, and if I stop taking it, I won't be able to sleep. I'm telling you right now, God's got a better way. Now, I'm not telling you to stop taking medication. You know, you got to be led by the Spirit. But here's the picture I want you to see. When you let go, you feel like you're falling, right, and that you're dropping down and that you're going lower. But remember what I said. You're not hitting the ground. You're hitting a trampoline. So when you let go and you jump, you're actually hitting something that makes you go higher. And then when you go higher, you're not hitting flat surface. You're hitting another trampoline. So you just keep going higher and higher in the Lord as long as you're willing to let go. Now, here's the verse, okay? So this is right out of Isaiah, verse, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 14, verse 12 says, How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. He didn't hit a trampoline. <laughs> See, he was kicked out. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. But this is the part you guys got to hold on to. You shall be brought down into Sheol, Satan. So what's the addiction? Is it some kind of uh, prescription drug? Maybe you hurt your back and you went and you got opioids for the painkiller and now you can't stop. God is bigger than those things. God is bigger than alcohol. God is bigger than even caffeine addiction could be another problem. Television, shopping, come on, how far do we want to go here? These are all counterfeit affections that we're looking to to satisfy us. Food could be a problem, right? But God is greater than all those things. So that's what I want to do. I just want to break off an addiction because here's the kicker, man. Verse 16 says, those who see you, Satan, will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? Well, guess what? God is opening the house of the prisoners because it's going to break off addiction. So we can just agree now as two people who've been delivered don't even want it anymore. Don't even want it. Like the wanter just emptied out. It's, it would be way worse if you still wanted it and you were just relying on your willpower. You can't rely on your willpower. It's got to be God's power. Amen? So just, just lift your hands, whatever that thing is. I don't need you to, to uh, you know, sp specify it. You know what the thing is because you can't stop. That's the test. You think you can quit, and then you try to quit, and you can't. Well, just say stop. God is bigger than Satan. And, and that addiction is not going to hold on to me. I'm going to look at Satan and say, is this the one <laughs> that we were so afraid of? No way. They're going to gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble? You're not making me tremble anymore, Satan. Could you just break that power of that addiction? Right. He's right. So right now you can be free. You can be free. And just like what Pastor Peter said about it, when I quit drinking out of sheer willpower, but I end up going back to it, and it was worse than before. When the Lord brings deliverance, he severs. He severs. And then he plugs you into a new source called rich, flourishing oil. Amen. That's so good. And as he strengthens you, part of the strength of God is able to say with resistance to the enemy, for temptation and the desire because he takes the desire completely so this morning when the, the bible says when the enemy's found out and light shines he must flee darkness flees so he's been found out of that which has caused you to tremble or be bound and today in the name of jesus every manner Every addiction, everything that has control, that you've lost control, is now broken yeah. in the name of Jesus. And now is severed, severed. Very source of it is severed in the name of Jesus. And we pray for fresh oil of the Holy Spirit or the glory of God to transform you from glory to glory. Once where you were weak, you will now be strong, and you'll go from strength to strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, Lord, take away the power of that thing to influence me and seduce me. If you're struggling with pornography, men, mostly usually men, 
Say, I'm not going to, that's not going to be appealing to my eyes anymore. I break that false covenant with that kind of stimulation. That is not going to stimulate me anymore because I'm going to focus on the holy things of God. Whatever, whatever strength I was getting from that counterfeit, Lord, take the nutrition of that thing away from me that I could feed on you. I'm going to fast and pray and picture myself going higher and higher. Every time I let go of something, I'm going to hit a trampoline and go up to the next level. Take me higher into you because there's no limit how high we can go in God. I speak it over this congregation, everybody listening, that you are free in Jesus. As Keith said earlier, we just agree. One puts 1,000 to flight, two put 10,000 to flight. Who the sun sets free, say it loud, is, is free, free indeed. indeed. You're awesome. We love you.